Hello, here we are in Papa John's eatery, the Shimpu Can. Just had a lovely piece of cheesecake, cappuccino cheesecake. My name is Michael Lamb. This is Ted Taylor. We are the editors of Deep Kyoto Walks, our upcoming ebook release, and we are going to tell you briefly about our writers today. So, the first chapter is Time Traveling on Gojo by Jennifer Louise Teeter. Jennifer Louise Teeter is the media and campaigns coordinator for the Greenheart Project, which is developing an open source hybrid sail solar cargo ship. Very exciting stuff. She's also a contributing editor for Kyoto Journal. Take a look at that. And uh, does heart work for, for them. That's not surgery, it's, uh, it's a type of thing. Also, she's one of uh, three ladies who write the 10,000 Things blog, so she's a very busy lady. She's responsible for 3,333 of those pieces, in fact. Yes. Her piece is about uh, ghost stories and gory stuff around Gojo and portals into other dimensions, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, next chapter. Our next chapter is by my fellow co-editor, Michael Lam himself, and the title is Red Brick in Sakura, a walk in modern Kyoto where you're following more or less the east side of town, heading toward downtown. Yep. Up from the uh, Biwako Canal Museum up to Shirakawa, Kita Shirakawa, where I uh, link up with Mr. Robert Yelling, who is also in our book, so we'll talk about him we'll later. We'll talk about him later. Yeah. Michael also is the editor and founder and the person responsible for Deep Kyoto itself, so without him, this project would not have come to fruition. It hasn't quite come to fruition, but it will be, it's fruiting as we, as we speak. And onwards, uh, Ghosts, Monkeys and Other Neighbors by Bridget Scott. Bridget Scott is a shiatsu... Hello. Hello, everyone. Bridget Scott is a shiatsu uh, teacher and practitioner and a buto dancer and a buto teacher. And you can find her site, uh, bridgetscottshiatsu.com. Very good. Yeah. And she encounters lots of cheeky monkeys in her walk around her neighborhood in uh, near the Manchuin area. It's quite interesting. Um, next one? And the next piece is called Climbing Mount Daimonji by uh, Miki Matsumoto, who is a local teacher and practitioner and lecturer on alternative medicine. And in fact, unknown to most people who know her, she's also a haiku poet. I did not know that. <laughs> and the next piece is by Mr. Robert Yellin. Cer foremost foreign ceramic expert in Japan and the author of this book, Ode to Japanese Pottery. I almost said poetry, but it's pottery. And uh, he, wrote, he used to write a column for the Japan Times for a decade on ceramics. He's, he's a very interesting man. He has a gallery here in town and he walks down the path of philosophy and gets lost on it. And our next piece is called Into the Tumult. Tumult? Tumult? By a gentleman named Pico Iyer, who is has written a number of books, both fiction and non-fiction, and uh, probably kind of fiction. most renowned for, uh, in Kyoto, at least for expats here, is uh, he wrote a book on Kyoto itself about a year that he spent here back in the late 80s, and it's still a very popular book. And Lady and the Monk is the title. And he's a very nice man. And um, next up is Chris Rothorn with Old School Gaijin Kyoto, a very amusing piece. I laugh every time I read it, and uh, yeah, intentional laughs. And uh, he is uh, Mr. Lonely Planet, really. He's written lots of Lonely Planet volumes, but especially he's known for Lonely Planet Japan and Lonely Planet Kyoto. That's an, an old copy I stole off uh, one of our other writers a few years back. Izumi, I have to give this back to you. The statute of limitations is up. I think yeah. we're safe. Next is uh, a gentleman named John Dougal, who also is well known for his book on Kyoto. Very One of the best books on Kyoto out there, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of history and just how it relates to us living in the city today, very which is good. very palatable. And a uh, more recent book, this book. is uh, The Hidden Christians of Japan. Did so I get that right? Sorry. Yeah, in Search of Japan's, Japan's Christ Hidden Christians. Yes. <laughs> we'll edit that out later, yeah. um, which is also a good read. I read this on Christmas, to be ironic, and it was uh, a good Way to spend my holiday. His book is called, uh, his article is called Kamogawa Musing. He basically walks down the Kamo River and he muses on it, and it's um, amusing. Not really, yeah. oh, but it is, it is entertaining and very interesting. Yeah. Right, and uh, the next book is um, by a fellow, I'm sorry, not the next book, but the next piece is called God's Monks, Secrets, Fish by John Ashburn, who uh, does a lovely little walk that winds up amongst the fish of Nishiki Market downtown 
And as John is a well-known food writer, multi-published in all sorts of times, Japan Times, New York Times, I believe. Or maybe uh, Forbes, the Japan Forbes, Times, Wall Street, Wall Street Journal, Journal yeah, and, and he's guest editor for the fall 2014 Kyoto Journal food issue, apparently. Nice. And uh, he's been in Kyoto for 27 years. He's a jolly good egg and he has lots of very nice recommendations. He goes down the Nishiki Koji market there and uh, has lots of nice recommendations for places to get little bits of bits to eat and I, I've been using some of those tips myself recently. Next up, Ted Taylor. That's me. This man. Ted is uh, very handsome and uh, his work has appeared in the Japan Times, Kyoto Journal, Resurgence, Outdoor Japan, Kansai Time Out, Elephant Journal and Skyward. And uh, he won top prize in the Kyoto International Cultural Association Essay Contest. When was that? 1982? 99, actually. <laughs> still, still harping on about that one. Anyway, his piece is quite interesting. It's a bit different from the others. He goes around, he goes around the block, basically, and buys a beer. But he, his mind goes off on various tangents while he's doing that and uh, reflects upon all kinds of things. Because I had nowhere else to go, actually. Yeah. Um, next, next up is... Stephen Henry Gill. Stephen Henry Gill, haiku, poet extraordinaire, artist, rock artist, and um, editor. He edited this book, which is quite nice, Rediscovering Basho, which came out uh, the late 90s. I think this is a very good doorway into Basho's poetry. If you, if you haven't got into Basho's poetry yet, then this is the way in. And more recently, uh, Meltdown is... Uh, a collection of haiku po poems from uh, local haiku poets, including Ted Taylor and myself. Michael Lamb. This is edited by Stephen too, and it's, uh, it's quite a nice volume. It's got a cover by Richard Steiner. I don't know if you can see that there. Richard Steiner designed the cover. The cover that's the old uh, Fukushima Daiichi plant there. And Richard he, also has a piece, I'm sorry, has a piece in our, uh, he's, he's provided us with a nice bit of artwork for, our, uh, for the book as well. Words out of my mouth. And next up is Sanborn Brown, hiking Mount Atago with a very uh, uh, eccentric tea ceremony teacher on a very sweaty night in July. And uh, Sanborn Brown, what can we tell you about him? He's been in... He's the, he, Kyoto for more than a decade. He's from Philadelphia. He's created CycleKyoto.com, so if you're very, a bicyclist, uh, it's a very, very recommended site. He that. also writes for the uh, well-known site uh, Japan Visitor. He's a writer for that as well. Uh, of books. I don't Joel know. Stewart. Joel Stewart is, uh, is a renowned artist here in town. He's been here since 86, I believe. Yep, that's correct. And so he's he's uh, his pieces can be found in permanent collections across the United States in several museums, and uh, he can be seen online at joelstewartart.com. A very nice fellow. He lives. Very nice our fellow. pieces nearly overlapped because he lives literally a block away from me, and we just happen to walk in different directions. But there's a few interesting overlaps in our pieces. Convergences. As well. Convergences. Yes, exactly. and um, his piece is in Northwest Kyoto, and he's he's looking at. His neighborhood with an artist's eye, so it's a bit, it's a bit different from the other pieces. Next, Izumi Texido Hirai, half British, half Japanese, raised in Barcelona, cha no yu tea ceremony aficionado, and uh, wears a kimono all the time. Very lovely kimonos. She's a charming lady. Mm, and working on a degree in Ch traditional Chinese medicine, studying qigong quite often yeah. uh, in the park. You can find her there. And uh, her piece is very nice, but she goes for all the seasons in the bot botanical gardens and some uh, personal memories in there too. Then, I'm back. Ted's back on the long march, which could be considered a little bit political, but not really. It's uh, just about the uh, the energy situation. In which we, the battery is going to die. So. Yeah, probably we should <laughs> hurry past that one. Yes, it's yes, a quite yes. short piece, but it's it's uh, worth thinking. It's about. a walk of a different type altogether. Yes. Yeah. Next, we have my co my colleague here up and down the quay, which is uh, basically another type of walk altogether as well, which is a bar crawl, where a, a musical bar crawl, a musical bar bar crawl. So a fellow named Max, aka Mark Dodds, 
who's Mark, a, a.k.a. Mike Stoltz. Either or. He's a uh, wonderful musician. Some fantastic music comes out of that young man. With, and uh, uh, With Ryotaro Sudo. And there was a night uh, in which they played 10 different shows, 10 different uh, sets across the the key, the Kyo. The Kiyomachi. That's it. Uh, and it's about, and the piece you can notice gets uh, more and more interesting as it goes along, as the night did as well. I wasn't there, I just yeah. read it in his piece, and you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Good times. Uh, rounding off is an account of walking all the way around the hiking trail around Kyoto. The Kyoto Trail, they call it. The Kyoto Ishu Trail. It's 60 kilometers. It starts at Fushimi Inari, goes up around the hills, and it finishes at uh, Matsuo Taisha on the west side of town. And that's by Perrin. Lindelof, and I believe we're getting that name correctly, and if it's uh, not uh, pronounced correctly, then please write a letter in the comments section. And Perrin Lindelof is from the Canadian Rockies, an avid hiker, and he is the author of National Geographic Traveler Japan 4th Edition. And then finally, to finish off, we have an epilogue by uh, a lady called Judith Clancy, who is well, very well known for her Exploring Kyoto book which is a book of walks as well, but of a different kind. Mm. And uh, more recently, the Kyoto Machia Restaurant Guide. She's also written, what else has she written? Where is she? Kyoto City of Zen. So she writes about religion and architecture and history and Machia and food, everything. So she, she knows what she's talking about. And she uh, goes into how her way of seeing has changed whilst living in Kyoto. So each piece is very personal and not your typical guidebook, it's very personal, it's people who put down roots here, know the area well and it's how their lives intersect with the greater life of the city. We, and we mustn't forget uh, Sarah Breyer, who's a local artist as well, and you've already seen her work, it's there in the cover, if you look in the upper right hand corner of this very website, you'll see it there, the blue. Blue book, very prominently displaying the title. If you're looking at this video on the website, then yes. <laughs> and if not, it's very wonderful. Just imagine it's here, up over Michael's right shoulder. There it is. Where's it, where's it over there? I'm not sure. I think it's over I, there. I got anyway. left right <laughs> Okay. We're better at editing than we are navigating websites. Or are we? Wait and find out very exactly. soon. Deep Kyoto Walks coming to you soon as an ebook on Amazon. Look it up. Bye-bye. Goodbye.